coming from out here, it's like it make you want to go straight to the top with this rap shit. You feel me? It make you want to go straight to the top and get up out of this shit and do something positive. Get some rap money, some legal money without having to deal with all that bullshit and all that other shit. We just out here, man, you know, it's just get it how you live out here. You feel me? Humble soul, we checking back in, man. We got um a very special lady on the line right now, the mother of a talented Bay Area rap artist who was uh unfortunately taken before he was able to really reach his peak. We got Miss Troy. I, I want to pronounce your last name correctly. It's Castaneda. 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 So uh so Troy, I mean just 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 let the listeners know a little bit about you and uh obviously you the mother of um Bay Area rapper Johnny Cash. Yeah, I'm, I'm Johnny Cash's mom, and um, just put out, you know, a few of his projects, and I have a lot more to go, but um, what happened, how it started, was um, one of his, he, well, he played football with one of the guys, and he called me one day, and he was like, what are you going to do with his music, and I'm like, I don't know, I, I don't really feel like, you know, dealing with that at the moment. And he said, well, give me a call when you, you know, decide, and um, I'll put you through Empire for distribution and so on and so forth. So one day I just decided, like, okay, let me just get it started because it, for, you know, in the beginning I couldn't even really go near it. I didn't even want to deal with any of that. And um, so it took me some years to get started. So now here I am. <laughs> What the business is, this your boy Cash, the fast gunner. This is how we do it out here in North Richmond, right here on 3rd and Silver. Man, you got to be strong, real strong and solid to survive out here. If you ain't, you weak, you going to break. You ain't going to make it out here. This shit is tough. There's a lot of vultures. Everybody want to eat. We all trying to have something. And it's enough money for everybody. But out here, we trying to spread it around and make it so everybody can share the same money. That's the difference between us and these other hoods. I want to go back a little bit. Can you, I mean, obviously I know uh, Johnny um, represented North Richmond, but I want to know if you could uh, just talk a little bit about just North Richmond and you all coming up there. Was he born and bred there? Did you all move around? But just talk a little bit about that. No, 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 no. See, he played sports and hung with all of these different guys. Um, so we, he wasn't raised in North Richmond. <laughs> I, w I wasn't raised in North Richmond for sure, but all of his friends and, you know, they were all, like, from North, so they started hanging with them, and I guess that's how he got into the North Richmond thing. So where were you all from originally, or where did he come up? So I'm originally from New Orleans, but then he came up, and we came up, he came up in Hilltop. Hilltop? Is a neighborhood in Richmond? Yes. Okay, okay. It is like Hilltop, and, you know, it goes up. And you know, it's just different parts of Richmond. They have Southside, they have North Richmond. They have um, different areas in Richmond, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, so you moved up from New Orleans, but he, he's solely a California guy. He, he didn't, he yes, didn't spend, he spend any time in New Orleans? Well, just visiting sometimes, you know, but... As as far as um being born or no, he was born and raised in in, he, in Richmond. But actually, when I when he first was born, we lived in um Germany for like four years. Oh, was a military kid. Uh huh. Yeah, my husband was in the military. So just tell me, I mean, before the music and the image getting down with this, etc. Like, what type of uh, kid was Johnny, and what, how was he growing up? Mischievous, <laughs> always doing something, you know, normal boy. Um, but you know, he was like, he was a, he was a joker. He liked to clown around a lot. Um, but he played all kinds of sports. He played baseball, basketball, football. Um, and then he got into music around, I want to say, like the age of ten. He had a little manager. 
and he started off as actually J Money. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a little dance group with him, four girls. And, you know, that's where he started. He had his little manager, and, you know. They went different places just to travel a little. And then he went to, um, my brother actually managed him, him and um, his friend. They were both named Kevin, but my brother and his friend managed um, Johnny. And he got a deal with Big, I think it was Big Three. It was a, a um, label out of L.A. And they actually gave him like a budget and he had a rap truck and they flew him to um, New York. He was in L.A. He he was at, he did music with Baby at Baby Faces, and, um, Jamie Foxx. And, in the studios, you know, different, I mean, he had, a, actually had a little deal, and then the record label split, and that's when, that's when that deal kind of fell apart, but yeah, he was with um, a label. This is up until maybe, I want to say 18, 19, something like around there, and then um, he went with um, this. Okay, see, I, I was doing my research and I saw that he had um had a group. I thought he had a group before he linked up with this, oh, the Hood yeah, Fellas. He had a, he also had a group which was um, the Hood Fellas. Hood Fellas. He had no sense before the Hood. He had a group, no sense, and then he had Hood Fellas. Are you seeing like um like a local? I don't want to say a stardom. Is he is he getting real popular locally? Is you seeing? Are you seeing right. things change? Or how how was that that time? Yeah, he he yeah. Okay, that's when he started getting locally noticed when he was with the, with the groups. And I think I think mainly when um, he went with um, when the hood fellas started, and then this, then you know. That's when stuff was, really took off from there. And everybody, you know, knew one from there also but the, the hip fellas started them as far as um, bay area what to do with your name be the second question i'm cash and i'm glad to meet you see me ask some people i had to reach you see me fly goddamn jury dancing in the light from the two bed duplex to mansion the night yeah hey little mama so a couple of years later, he gets down with one of the one of the buzz and you know labels. Is is you know the front man is obviously Mac Dre, and from right. what I understand, I was checking out some interviews with Ryder J. Clyde, and he said that he had actually like told Dre about Johnny Cash even before he passed away, and I guess that they had even met and, and things of that nature. But I don't know if they actually had a chance to collaborate or if he got down with the label after uh, Dre passed away. Do you know? Well, he got well. What happened was they talked about, I know writers said they talked about taking cash with them because I guess Mac Dre was going to get away from the label and start his own thing or something. And they wanted to take cash. I guess then that happened to Mac Dre, you know, but that was the talk. So he got down with this. He's in his group with Ryder, um, and right. Money Gang Mob. They put out a right. couple of projects, right. um, and then he puts out like his own solo through this, right? Right. He's with Tito Bell, he did a um, mixtape. So at that point in time, you know, this is really buzzing, not just throughout the Bay Area or on a regional level, but you know, they got the MTV Welcome to My Hood. They come to the Bay right. Area. They got the you know, they're doing the hyphy, all that big hyphy phase and all of that. And right. This is really bubbling around that time. Man, what was it like being his mom, seeing him finally get, like, some real type of stardom in his area? Well, you know, <laughs> it was just my son. <laughs> it was just like, you know, my son, it's, it's, it, it was a little exciting for me, but more exciting for to see him, you know what I mean, live his dream out. But, um Johnny, he wasn't really with the hyphy. He he was with that with them, but he wasn't a hyphy type. You know what I mean? He wasn't that hyphy type of person because he was always just the cool, calm, you know, type of guy. It was just the hyphy era era, but he, you know, you never really seen him hyphy like that. So before you know everything played out, you know, um, obviously Johnny Cash was like one of the shining stars 
seemed like one of the next up man who could really take the Bay Area to another level on the rap scene. Um, right. You know, unfortunately, you know, uh, obviously he was he was you know shot. And, right. You know, when stuff like that happens, you know, sometimes rumors can spread, and it's a lot of different information, misinformation, etc. But what can you say about the situation? What you know took place. What I know took place was I four niggas walked up to him coming out of a, a, a out of a Leo apartment and um, was talking to him like you know Johnny Cash and he was like yeah and um, you know acting like they fans or something I guess and then next thing you know that transpired out there but I, I don't understand it because it was people around that you know, can um, do some talking, but you know how the streets are. De- definitely some hater shit, so I don't know, you know. The reports I read, it did say like it happened like like in the morning, like broad daylight outside oh, of an apartment. like 10 a.m. in the morning, you know, because I was at my other son's. He, he's, he's a real estate agent, and um, he has his own trucking business, but I was at, the real estate office and they, they calling me like my phone is just buzzing I'm like what's going on this is like 10 15 I'm like you know I mean the girls with them uh, it's people outside so people saw stuff you know but to this day nobody knows nothing so I like I say now like if you're in a rap group or rap or you in the gang, basically, because look at all these people that are just killing up. Like, you, you'll never be them. I mean, you could hate on them and you could you know, want what people have, but you'll never be that person. So I don't understand. I don't understand what's all the hate about. You know what I mean? Us hating on each other is just ridiculous to me. It, it doesn't make any sense in the world. None. There's no logic for none of it, so... Nobody can ever tell me that this shit that they do is logical. Mm-mm. So, Not at all. So when you say something like um, they approached him and act like they were fans, do you feel like this situation transpired because he was an artist or you think it was like deeper than that? I think it was deeper than that. Well, I think, you know, our, our artists had something to do with it because, you know, people hate on people that they feel like it's going to... Um, be better than them at something or are better than them at something you know what I mean and um, they don't want to see that happen um, people pretend that they want want to see you do good but they don't want to see you do good they don't want to, nobody to be better than them and to me like I said you'll never be like the person that want to be like and I think it went deeper I, I just like I said it was on some hating shit and I already know it had to be. Donnie didn't, he wasn't a, I'll I tell you one thing, he wasn't a, um, you and, you, you're not going to fuck with him, because he, he not just going to allow nobody to just do that to him, you know, he ain't no softy, he was never that, but he didn't go after people to just want to hurt somebody, you know what I mean, like, like he said, you could, we could eat off the same plate, you can hate me all you want to, just leave me the fuck alone, and that's the type of person he always been. But just don't mess with me. Do you feel like it was even linked to Mac Dre since it happened in Vallejo? Just him being down with this and all of that? And, and and I kind of have a, you know, I've heard that also, you know, a lot of times about, you know, it being connected or, or, or just that look what happened to both of them and the way it happened, you know. And I've heard that too, but, you know, who's going to admit to anything like that? Um, or, or say anything like I said the streets don't talk um, not, to, not to drag that on um, too much longer but I did have an, another question for you there were, some reports I said said that said that he was with his wife or that he was married and they were staying in that apartment complex he, Johnny's never been married but he was staying he, he was in you know I don't think he was even really like living there with the girl but you know how you know staying there sometimes um, and people, like I, I told him, don't ever let your head where people know where you land, you know what I mean? So I think he kind of got a little comfortable with that, uh, stand there some, often, you know. 
but yeah, he wasn't staying. He he was never married. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I just relive it over over in my head, trying to just figure it out because, like I said, all these people there and nobody. Well, they saw, but they couldn't see or they didn't know, or you know, just all this nonsense. And I've heard some stuff, you know, about seeing stuff and seeing who who was there, who was driving, and you know. I hear that somebody was holding them, you know, to the uh, helicopter got there to get them. So, because he actually didn't die there on the spot, you know. Yeah, I read that too. It said that he was. Um, they lifted him by a helicopter to the, the like to a hospital, and that he was on yeah. life su- life support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he was fighting for sure. And he didn't leave behind any kids, or. Well, yeah, he has a son. Actually, he has two boys. Ah, are they in the music too? No. Uh. Nope. Not that I know. Of. <laughs> nah. And I, I don't think they'll ever be into no rap or anything like that. So yeah. after after everything, um play it out like that unfortunately you know he like you said he was down with this did people from the label kind of step in and support you and support the family and kind of get to the bottom of everything or how was the reaction well i I think they kind of supported me for a minute you know what i mean but i don't want to say it wasn't I don't know. I, I don't know. Everything is just weird to me. Yeah, you know, people, people, and, and maybe because people don't know how to act, you know what I mean? When stuff like this happens, I don't know. Um, but I, I mean, they did support me somewhat, you know, they did like t-shirts and different things and, but I don't know. It was just, it just was weird to me. It seems like I, it should have been more supportive. I should say, I don't know. And maybe that's just my thoughts. With you being a mom, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you've been keeping his legacy alive. And just over the years, you know, I've heard different, you know, rappers put Johnny Cash's names in their lyrics and um, shout them out and things of that nature in interviews. Um, like you mentioned, you've, you've released multiple <laughs> albums. But um, aside from all of that, man, you know, what would you want people to know about Johnny Cash? How would you want him to be remembered, just him and his legacy? Just know that he knew that he was a shit. He just always had that confidence, and he knew, like he always said, I'm, I'm getting ready to blow up out here. And I, feel, I felt the same way, because, I mean, like, and it's not just because my son is my son. But I just sit and I could listen to him all day, you know what I mean? Because I know he's talking about something, and I know his ass can rap, period. It was no other way but to the top. Oh, man, that's simple and plain, man. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Troy, for taking time out to chop it up with me. You know, RIP to Johnny Cash. Definitely um, gone way too soon, if I can say, you know, um, God bless you and your family. Just um, all the supporters, you know. Um, any lasting words you want to leave with the listeners? Um, just wait for some more because I got more coming. And that that's crazy, though. You still releasing music. This happened more than a decade ago, 15 years plus ago, I think. And you still got, you know, music in the vault for him. From him. That means that mean he really recorded. He really worked like on some Tupac type stuff. Johnny Cash mom, Troy, rock with a humble soul. Thank you for interviewing me. And anytime you want to come back and do it again, I'm here. Got some killers in the bridge getting cold cash. Put some money on your head, bet you won't last. Riding with the 50 clip and wearing no mask. And I got my trippy stick smoking no hash. Rest in peace, Johnny Cash, the fast gunner. In the drought, just extra on the last number.